Hi, I'm the MedPod engineer, and I've been arguing that the marijuana prohibition on possession has been invalid since Terry Parker Day 2001, never resurrected by the courts. But in 2003, the Justice Minister was going to reintroduce legislation he said was decriminalizing marijuana, and I knew if the law was dead, he was going to be recriminalizing marijuana. So I went on Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana while the law was still invalid to prove it was dead, and I did end up convicted, and my probation just finished today. And this is the story of almost six years ago when I first went on Parliament Hill to prove the marijuana possession law was dead and stop Parliament from bringing back a new prohibition. Wednesday, May 14th, 2003. There's too much at stake, the article, I dare gamble life imprisonment. There's too much at stake to let the government recriminalize without anyone knowing that the law had died. And there was only one way to test it before recriminalization is put back in place tomorrow. And that's being busted today. I faxed this off to the Crown Attorneys this morning. Two Crown Attorneys, Chris Leeflor, Vanita Guala, Croft Michelson, Alain Prefontaine, Catherine Lawrence, Sébastien Gagné, Sophie Maté, Harvey Frankel, Lara Spears. Dear counsel for the Canadian government, I have sought since August 1st, 2001 to have declared in force and effect the ruling of invalidity of the prohibition of marijuana by the Ontario Court of Appeal in Parker, 2000. Two Ontario Superior Court judges, and many provincial judges in Ontario, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, have since come to the conclusion that the government's response failed to comply with the court's ruling, the MMAR. The law is unconstitutional. The law has always been unconstitutional since 1923. All people prosecuted under this unconstitutional law must be freed, pardoned, and have their convictions expunged. Everyone has to start with a clean slate, even if the government succeeds in recriminalizing marijuana. But the courts have accepted that cannabis has saved Terry Parker and Mary Lynn Chamney from epileptic seizures. My affidavit contains the statistics of 3,600 yearly epileptic deaths in Canada at 10 per day or 720,000 worldwide at 2,000 a day. Legalization of cannabis would save them. Any prohibition impediment kills. With over 10,000 needless epileptic deaths since the Ontario Court of Appeals has suspended its declaration of invalidity for one year and permitted the government of Canada to continue violating their right to life by prohibitionary impediments to access for an extra year, Terence Parker, exempted from that violation of life that continued for all other Canadian epileptics, that genocide has now gone on for three years. That's long enough. Ending the UN prohibitions would save two million worldwide. Suspending remedy on the right to life was a fatally flawed decision that certainly qualifies as a pretty spectacular loss of life that could have been saved. All you counsels for the Attorney General know my argument that the failure of government to comply with the court's ruling for the new legislation means the invalidity of the prohibition of cannabis in CDSA took effect on August 1st, 2001, has been vindicated by many provincial court judges who have now so ruled that prohibition died on Terry Parker Day, August 1st, 2001. You also know that nowhere in the Parker decision is any 30 gram limit alluded to. Access to 30 grams for Parker is no secure supply. With the political masters trying to resurrect prohibition by calling recriminalization a decriminalization, someone must dare to expose that the killer law is dead, that the funeral fort is almost over, and that no one's going to bring it back to life the genocide of denying herbal medicine to the sick, without someone who will dare to go all the way to oppose. Someone must dare. I dare. It helps that it's my engineering duty to do so. Later this afternoon, I will pick up my store of seven pounds of marijuana and take it to Parliament Hill to openly smoke a joint as MPs enter and dare the government to prosecute me under a now dead law. And you can see the picture behind me there, or here, of me smoking my doobie in front of the Peace Tower, and then the next picture over of me being arrested. 
Then I will be leaving a pound at the door of Parliament for their inspection, leaving a second pound at the Prime Minister's office. It could help them quit alcohol. Then I'll go to the Supreme Court of Canada on Wellington Street and drop off a third pound. Then across the street to drop off a fourth pound at the Attorney General's office. Then I'll be going down Elgin Street to the Ontario Provincial Courthouse to drop off a fifth pound. Then off to the Elgin to the Ottawa Police Station where I'll drop off my sixth pound. Of course, if I get off Parliament Hill. You are counsel who should know best the law and true situation, no matter what you're paid to argue. But you also have a commitment to the citizen, me, to advise the attorneys general correctly. I don't mind being charged and getting this before a judge. Right now, quickly, before recriminalization. But I will mind not being released on my own recognizance after being charged. Air and daring to deprive me of my liberty based on this invalidated law, and you'll become part of an infamous et al. that I will be chasing through the bar associations, courts of justice, and internet courts of public opinion for the rest of your professional careers. Not if you be wrong in just charging me and getting the issue settled quickly. The engineer wasn't invited to draft the United Nations Millennium Declaration because I'm in a Guinness Book of Records or the Great Canadian Character Anthology. It was because I was right about the statistical genocide caused by the usury banking system that an interest-free Unilets banking would correct. Just as I'm now right about the statistical genocide caused by the prohibition of cannabis that can be corrected. As all the woes of the rum-running wars ended with legalization, so too the woes of the drug-running wars will end with legalization. Someone's got to put a stop to the deaths due to the drug wars based on the now unconstitutional and dead law. Someone must dare to gamble on an issue of genocide. I will dare gamble that I'm right. Do not dare gamble the engineers wrong. Have someone fresh with high school math help you out. Of course, the gambler could be bluffing, so don't bust me until I open the bag. John, the engineer, and the only way you can help other people is to contact your nearest CTV, CBC, Global, CanWest, National Post, Globe and Mail, and ask them what happened, because odds are I won't be in a position to give you a report tonight. So, I get busted, but I got out and on my own recognizance, and I wrote the next message May 15th in the belly of the beast. What happened? Yesterday I explained that the prohibition law has been dead since August 1st, 2001, even though no one noticed or argued it except me and my MedPod guerrilla lawyers, Parker, Paquette, Dupree, finally Brian McAllister in Windsor, and then before judges in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. With all these judges saying that the prohibition on marijuana was unconstitutional, I had to take a gamble to prove it before the government could bring in new legislation to recriminalize it. But they called it decriminalization. Of course, we've all been waiting on the decision of Justice Rogan on the Crown's appeal of the McAllister win in Windsor. But with the judge taking his sweet time to come to a conclusion, I considered that it was a stall until the new law could come in, and then whether yes or no, with the new laws, our win would be worthless. Since Justice Minister Corchon had announced he was going to be presenting the new prohibitions to Parliament today, Thursday, I had to make my move while the law was still dead. So, I rounded up seven pounds over three keys of marijuana from the Canadian Marijuana Growers Association to ensure that if they did charge me, I would be getting a superior court process whose decision would be binding on all the other judges in Ontario and with a jury. The drawback is a life sentence to get a jury. In the morning, I faxed a press release to the group of Crown attorneys announcing I would be at the entrance of the House of Commons on Parliament Hill for the opening of the question period, smoking a joint and daring the government to bust me based on their now dead law. Of course, I was worried about getting stopped before reaching my spot where I expected the reporters to be, but when I arrived on the hill, I found half a dozen reporters who'd come for the protest. On the walk from the centennial flame up to the hill, I lit up my joint and had a few puffs while they took pictures. That's the picture of me on the page two of today's Toronto Star in Quebec, No Soleil. I then moseyed over to the bus stop outside the west door of the House of Commons where I'd protested against interest rates in the early 1980s every Thursday for five years. 
And as members arrived, I heckled stentorially, Do not recriminalize marijuana. The law is dead. Do not recriminalize it. I explained loudly, shoutingly at, to the House that the government had failed to comply with the Parker Court ruling and the law had died. Then I started pulling up my seven pounds of marijuana from my duffel bag, explaining that they were for the inspection of the House members, the Prime Minister, the Justice Minister, the Ottawa Police, and the seventh I was keeping for now. Then I packed them back, for, but for one I was going to leave for the House, and went to the front door of the House and tried to get in to leave it for their inspection. But the security would have nothing of it. I asked if I could leave it for the Speaker of the House, but they said no. I asked if I, how I could leave it, and they just shrugged. So I put the pound down at the entryway and said I hoped some MP would be daring enough to pick it up and bring it in for their inspection. As I then started to leave to go over to the Prime Minister's office in the East Wing, security asked me not to move as they'd called the RCMP. <clears throat> While I continued to explain my arguments for being there with the pot, an old political opponent, now a Liberal MP for Ottawa East, Eugène Belmont, got off the bus and was entering. When he saw me, he came over to shake my hand. I told him he should not decriminalize marijuana because the law had died and I'd be in big trouble if I was wrong. He was a bit shocked at what I was doing and stuck around to watch the conclusion. You can see him in the picture watching the RCMP take me away before he must have run in and told Kretzian, Termel's at the door and he's mad. We better call off the law. 